so I live in uh, Brooklyn, as you may know. And uh, people, another comic that lives in Brooklyn was like, what do you do for groceries? And I go, well, everything's so expensive in New York City. I, when I can, I drive to Long Island. <laughs> I get groceries there. I'll go to like Target or ShopRite or uh, whatever. And, uh, you know, so now uh, it's become too expensive to do YouTube shows in New York City. So that's why I've moved the show to Long Island. That's right, folks. We're in Valley Stream. Yeah! And uh, with me today is um, Joe Pontello, fan, filmmaker, uh, sort of actor. What else do you do? Light engineer. I'm a light engineer today. Um, insect transporter. Insect transporter. <laughs> I bring him in from Pennsylvania. Editor. Oh, you also <laughs> uh, filmed my last special, No One Asked That's For right. This, uh, against your will. Yes, it's but, true. But you did go along with it, and I very much appreciate it. It was actually your idea to film the special, kind of. Yeah. You know, I had it in my head, and I was like, I think, you know, I need that post-COVID uh, comedy special. And then uh, we had just released your movie, which was Sunday, Sunday, Sunday. Which is available nowhere. Available nowhere. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, yeah. So that was awesome and, and gorgeous and very easy. And uh, not very easy. But the two times I filmed specials, I was able to do it both in one take. Hmm. And I guess that's sort of impressive. I don't know. I mean, <clears throat> it's... Uh, it, I thought we... Uh, I thought we had a lot of fun making the special, too, because, like, I mean, when we did the movie, I was indebted to everybody oh, <laughs> eternally because well. I was so appreciative of everybody coming out. And, you know, this is a friends and family type of situation. So I especially me. Yeah, especially you. <laughs> you know, you get all the laughs in the movie. Well, so, now. You know. Oh, yeah. In fact, my uh, my dad goes, hey, how could we see Anthony's movie? I go, oh, you didn't get like a, a, isn't it like on a key? Yeah, it's on a key yeah. file. Yeah. And uh, he goes, ah, maybe your sister did. I don't know. Uh, I just want to watch your scenes, though. I don't, want to see <laughs> I, don't, I don't care about any of that racing stuff. Uh, That's pretty much what anybody says. Yeah. But see, so the first time you did a movie, you, it brought a whole bunch of people out to Pennsylvania. And that was cool, but also chaotic because I feel like, this was your first time doing something like this. Yeah. And I get it, too, because I've been in this, the same situation as you, where you're like, yeah, everyone will just come out, and I'll just bang people out, and then they'll be gone. And that's not how it happened the first time. It was kind of chaotic, lots of people standing around. Um, I think I got there at, like, 8 a.m., and you didn't use me until, like... 2. Well, I think, around, I think around 1230, you were like, here's your jacket. <laughs> so, get used to it. <laughs> yeah, familiarize. In another half hour, we'll give you the hat. Yeah. <laughs> and then you'll be really in character. Um, but then the second time for the sequel uh, that we shot back in September, uh, I got out there, and as soon as I was there, you're like, all right, boom! And we went right into it. And in fact, I feel like we finished too early and too soon. <laughs> Possibly. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> I have all this time to kill now. I don't know what to do with myself. Um, cause I, I went from... You had a show, right? Yes. There, yeah. Somewhere in... I had a show at a camp, which, uh, may a, have been... A camp? Like a kid's camp? Uh, well, like a family camp. Okay. Yeah. They okay. decided to do, like, a labor... Like Poconos kind of situation? Well, yes, except it was somewhere not far from Atlantic City. Mm. So, and they clearly had no idea how a comedy show was supposed to work. I, I don't think the, anybody does. And usually, no, it's it, stand-up comedy is this business where a lot of people think it's a good idea on both ends. Like the people who want to have comedy shows think it's a good idea, and the people who want to do comedy also think it's a good idea. And the best part is no one ever tells them it's not a good idea. So this leads to shows like this. <laughs> That's really what this is about. The Joe Pontillo podcast. The Joe Pontillo show. It's the po Joe Pontillo show. It's it is. not a podcast. It's not a podcast. Because it yet. can be it might become whatever a podcast. Yeah. Be. Yeah, I like that. 
because I used to have a podcast. Hmm. And was everyone, I on that? Like back in the day? You recorded an intro for it once. Oh, that's, that's what it was. Because I, I was thinking about it when you asked me to be on this the other day. I was like, what did we do that time? That was a long time ago. That yeah, be, that like, was close uh, to 10 I, years ago. I did that. No, well, I did it from 2016 till about 2021. Okay. And then my co host died. Could have just said, I don't want to be on the show anymore. <laughs> Decided to die instead. Also, we were supposed to watch the Zack Snyder uh, oh, yeah. Justice League cut, and that was supposed to be the next episode we were going to do. And he obviously decided against it. Um, no, I really bad, but no. Okay, so then that podcast happened. That started as strictly like just talking crap about stand up comedy, uh, which was fun for a while. It was a good like avenue for me to you know do a lot of stories, and then. Uh, I decided, uh, you know, okay, it's too much negativity. <laughs> and it sort of shifted to, like, movies and pop culture. Mm. Um, so, uh, and then I was, uh, what was it, 2022, I was about to do another podcast uh, with a guy, this comedian, Carmelo Bon Jovi, and he all of a sudden got horrific, like, intestinal problems his name is seriously bon jovi yeah it's not spelled like the singer bon jovi it's spelled b-o-n-g-i like very uh, italian like he's well you know bon jovi's name that's not his name well god i would hope not it's bon jovi mm. but that's way too, oh then too that's italian then they have the Jersey. same last name really yeah i guess wow. so i don't think they're related but because i always say bon jovi but uh, <laughs> but full disclosure he uh, then ended up in the hospital. <laughs> you have a, I'm really nervous being on this podcast. No, no, no. It's, as long as you're not co-hosting it. You can be... I, okay. No, nothing has ever Never. happened to a guest. Okay. I don't think I've ever lost a guest. But <laughs> co-hosts, like, you know, karma is out for you. I don't know uh, what to say. Anyway, but yeah, this is episode five now of the Joe Pontillo Show. And I quit. Huracan, which uh, is a Comic Con that takes place in East Rockaway. Mm. Uh, and now it's twice a year. I think it's like July 23rd and then November 20 or November 16th. It's to, you know, save a church or something. <laughs> Cool. <laughs> so they can keep having Comic Cons there? Yeah, that's pretty much the only thing. They want to do the church so we can still so we, comics. Yeah. Uh it's in the gymnasium of a church. It's run by this guy Dave Donovan, who's uh, really great. I don't know if you met him. He was at my taping. But, yeah, I think I did. But I don't think you went around shaking everyone's hand. Yeah, I'm filming this taping. How you doing? Yeah, I'm trying to keep focus here. <laughs> you know I, I'm pretending things... to enjoy the show. <laughs> oh, I did I it, that was the funny, that was the interesting thing about shooting the, the special was like, I was trying to be an audience member while simultaneously making sure that we were right. capturing it, you know. Which was good because, God, we needed an extra audience member or two. Because <laughs> I thought you had a good turnout. I mean, that was a big room. It is a big room. I've been Rest doing in peace to that magician guy. Oh, yeah. I have been doing now uh, just regular comedy nights there. Mm. And, you know, we, the last few, we've had about 100 people each time. Barnum so. Ballroom, right? Yes. Yeah. Although they don't want to call it that anymore. Oh. But the sign's still up. Okay. They, yeah, they just call it Michael's. Call it something else, even though it says <laughs> that. Don't change it. Yeah, but it's been great, and they've been fantastic. And, uh, you know, last show was on Friday, actually. Mm. Um, they just have strobe lighting going on during the show. <laughs> This Wait. is a uh, comedy show slash Slayer music video. Yeah, I mean, it, I mean, it, it's great for music. <laughs> yeah. And me personally, I've always thought of comedy as like another form of like it's like you're going to a rock concert, except you're not. But oh, I, I agree. I love when uh, we have a mutual friend, Neil Rubenstein, who uh, you know I was out with Taking Back Sunday, and he was opening up for them. And it was like the perfect fit, you know. And it's like I love them, and you know, Jim Brewer did it for Metallica. For that's a while. true. Yeah, I would. There's definitely a long history of it, and I think that's true. Like, there's a big connection with the. I would love the audience to demand an encore. I would love to crowd surf. 
I almost did that in Florida in February because there was like to get on the stage it was literally this this big a space so I go I don't know if I want to risk going that way again so I might just crowd surf off the stage after my set if that's possible um speaking of Neil Rubenstein who I've known for I think I met him in like 2007 uh he was doing comedy and then he stopped and then he came back very briefly and then he stopped again and then he started and he was always funny and i would always tell him he was funny and he's just like nah, nah, nah it's not me um and i remember i got him on this like comedy contest out at mcguire's in bohemia and um you know and he and i was one of the judges <laughs> and i was like three years into comedy and i was judging a comedy like comedy comedy mafia yeah well i you're mean i take a dive <laughs> <laughs> you're gonna lose in the finals you're gonna split the winnings forty. <laughs> yeah you you're gonna host the open mic they're gonna get a weekend <laughs> um and so he advanced to the next round and there was some guy on the show who was like this is bs man I should have I should have advanced. What happened? Who's in charge here? And he's like yelling at me and the other judges. And in the middle of it, Neil walks over to me and just goes, "Hey man, thanks so much for passing me along." I'm like, "Dude, get out of here!" He's, it looks like we're in cahoots. <laughs> well, I mean, a lot of that stuff does feel rigged. I mean, we used to. I, well, I mean, a... it's a completely rigged industry, but, <laughs> but that's besides the point. I mean, yeah. I've seen it so many times, like being in bands and stuff, playing like Battle of the Bands and, you know, or even in film festivals. I've had moments where, you know, the judges, kids or whatever are hosting a category that their kid had something in and then they win. And, and, and it's like, it's not that I should have won. It's that there's other people in my category that was were way better than them, but somehow the kids. Huh. Wow, even you know, in film festivals where I feel like there's like a little bit of an indie aspect to all that. Some festivals are incredible. You know, right. they, they they're they're fair, they're honest, they're there for the art, they're there for the actual output. Oh, of I the, hate the art. Well, <laughs> That's yeah, not why I get into me this. Too. <laughs> um, <laughs> No, but, you know, and then you still cross paths with, like, you know, politic politics in, in everything. Like, oh, yeah. You know. I mean, you know, I was, a couple episodes, I was, like, sort of ranting about how Hollywood, there's so many people, they call them Nepo babies. Mm. You know, people who's only really in the industry because they're related to somebody famous. Yeah. And all of them have been getting very butthurt recently and being like, let's just talk about something else. <laughs> but, you know, I, it needs to be. And it's not to say that all these people are untalented. No. Just be you're humble gonna wind, about it. You're going to wind up being <laughs> probably pretty good at doing this stuff if you grew up. Like, for instance, I grew up in a household of carpenters, uh, artists, magicians, <laughs> musicians, uh, falconers, falconers. So I can, you know, have a bird fly to me, you know, and <laughs> catch it. I can build, teach things. it to steal things that I want. Yeah. That's... So, you know, you want to picking up those tools, you know, those tricks of the trade. You would imagine like, what's her name? Uh, Ron Howard's daughter. She's very good. You know, there's a lot of people out there that like, fall into that Nepo baby category, but they actually can do it. Yeah. And then there's a lot of people where it's like, ugh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Try I mean, something else. You know, but <laughs> right. Whatever. You know, there's plenty of bad actors too. And it doesn't matter who they are. I'm one of them. You are. No, you're, you're pretty good at <laughs> acting. Anyone's better yeah. than my dad at acting. It's... <laughs> No matter what the scene is, he'll just start laughing. I'm like, that's okay. <laughs> this is the best though. Um, so speaking of actors, um, we lost one recently. Um, Which one? Rest in peace, O.J. Simpson. O.J. Oh, <laughs> Who, like, I didn't even... It, it's so weird because he joined Twitter, like, four or five years ago or something. And he just became this, like, big Twitter personality. Where every year he'd be like, okay, here's the Juice's fantasy football picks. And it's like, dude, just go away. Like, out of all the people who needed to just go away. But on he the same, couldn't. 
He couldn't. No, he, he couldn't because he had to pay. I think he had to pay so much money to the family all yeah. the time that that like he had to make money somehow. I think he he died still owing them millions upon millions of dollars. Yeah. Um, and he, I think TMZ caught up with him once and asked him why he's never in L.A. And he goes, I don't like to be in L.A. because I'm afraid of running into the real killer. <laughs> a mirror? <laughs> and, right. No mirrors anywhere else. Or, and here's a theory, if he didn't kill them, maybe he hired someone to kill them and never paid that person. Fair. So he's afraid of running into them because he owes the money. And uh, he's just tired of owing people money. Um, the memes were pretty good. I mean, you know, they were, so, there were some really good. He legitimized quality. so many things. Uh, the car chases. You know, who was watching car chases before that? Uh, Court TV. I guess the Menendez brothers was the first case that really got people to watch court cases. Yeah. And then it got popular. And then they were like, we need some something else. We need something big. OJ, can you kill a couple of people? And he's like, yeah, no problem. <laughs> I think I have an idea. Yeah. Hear me out. I'm really supposed to kill my wife. <laughs> oh, ex-wife. Ex wife. Ex wife. Yeah. There's gonna be gloves. It's gonna be so obvious. A Bronco. I'm, if it was today, he would have if it happened today, he would have just taken a selfie. There'd be a selfie of him with their bodies, and yeah. they'd be like Photoshop. <laughs> yeah. <right. laughs> Anything could be denied today. I mean with the AI. Yeah, yeah. Your Honor. Come on. Oh, all right. <laughs> Or he just runs for like a hundred yards in front of them. Yeah, play the clip of him as Nordberg and uh, the Naked Gun two and a half plays. Dude, those are the best movies. They really were. It's like uh, it was nice of him to wait until the third one was finished before killing people. <laughs> Get us through the trilogy. <laughs> so nice. Right. There's not going to be a fourth one, right? Okay, good, because I've got something I've been holding off. For I a love while. Naked Gun though. We I watched it again recently with my wife, and I was like, this is peak, like comedy filmmaking to me like so every, good the third one's a little off compared to the first two but, but you're like plenty comparing like two un unbelievably great films to like a great film oh uh, yeah it's, exactly. so it's almost because like it, it's it did start like falling off just a little bit at the end but i mean the the the, the jokes in the first one and even uh oj was good in it like Got to give it to him on that, like, falling right, down the stairs yeah. and everything. Like, <laughs> all the stuff he did, like, he was good at it. And and you watch it and you're like, he couldn't kill people? Did you see that documentary they did about him? I think it was, like, ESPN or something like that. Um, it was so amazing because, like, it paints the first half of it really, like, paints the, the landscape of what the world looked like when OJ was a hero. Right. To the world. And by the end of that act, you're like, I love this guy. <laughs> like, <laughs> and you know what you know what he did, but you're still like, wow, he was incredible. And then you get to like Naked Gun and he really starts hitting this high and then you know, you get and then shot the Hertz down. commercials. Yeah. <laughs> he was in a few other things too. I'm surprised that as soon as he died, they didn't all the TV networks didn't immediately cut to like an emergency episode of the Kardashians. Yeah. <laughs> That's kind of feels missed. And also, there should be like a police chase of the Hearse. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> let's come on. Let's milk this just a little more, but. Uh, I guess that's uh, that for um... <laughs> for OJ for OJ yeah <laughs> unless he you know he recorded some stuff he has one final book called uh, you know the real killer was the friends we made along the way <laughs> such a <laughs> such a terrible and funny person that's so bizarre um, yeah but uh, that's where we're at now have you seen the new Ghostbusters movie I just saw it oh you did what'd you think I really enjoyed it. I mean, there was a lot of things with it that I walked away from going, uh, you know, if they had just done this a little bit differently, it would have been better. I thought you it know? was like two thirds of the movie was great. And then at yeah. the end, they were just like, ah, this just kind of resolves itself. Yeah. I mean, like, because when you watch, I'm not saying, I'm not saying you have to cater to fans all the time, but like, it's the same I think they're doing a better job of, of of it than like Star Wars has been doing because I think they're learning from Star Wars personally that 
that Star Wars was made for people like our age, you know, a little bit older, that grew up with this, and it should be catered to us. Like, in, if you ask me, like, I'm not, I don't want you to re-injure, you know, uh, invent the wheel. I want you to make a continuation of what I loved, you know. Yeah. And I felt like, which is why the, Star Wars fans are a little insane. Yes, <laughs> I and and I I think rightfully so at sometimes because I think it drives people crazy when they do certain things because they did the force awakens and that was basically just like a reimagining of a new hope so everyone was like yeah when i went to go see one of the, i forget even which one it is because i hated all the new star wars the new movies. new ones you hated but when leia floats back to the ship i literally got up and looked around i was like am i being like filmed right now is it a joke <laughs> like this is a joke right that and, was very bad and cringy, especially since she had uh, just died in real life. <clears throat> and then you're like, oh, my God, they're killing her off. Oh, wait. It was very... <laughs> she just teleported back into the thing. I, I was fine. not a huge fan. But I but back to the Ghostbusters, like, I do think they're doing it pretty good justice. I thought that whatever the monster was, was really well done. Like, yeah. very scary. It felt more like an episode of the old cartoon show. Mm, yeah, it That's... definitely had that. Uh, and and I understand that. Like, I understand, you know, you can't make Ghostbusters 1 again. No. It's not going to happen. It's nothing. I if... thought the, what was the one before this? Oh, uh, Afterlife? Uh, yeah, Afterlife. Is that what it was? I thought it was great. I really, truly enjoyed that. So I, I did enjoy this one, too. It just kind of was like a bummer when... I don't want to ruin the ending. But like there was like a moment at the end where... The Everybody's original... kind of just standing around. Yeah, like... <laughs> like, And then the situation just resolves itself. And they're just like, Woo! Time to make jokes! <laughs> I know. And like it comes down to one person. And it's like... I thought the whole point was like we we're all coming together to do this. Ghostbusters, not yeah. Ghostbusters. Right. I I literally said that to myself. I was like, it's <laughs> a team, right? Yeah. So there was just like elements like that, and like at the very end, you know, you know when they fought when they fought both uh, big bosses in the first films, it felt very huge. Yeah. It felt. Like a huge and everybody like is watching this kind of unfold even, yeah even though in this one i feel like they were closer to losing definitely and the pro it would have been bad but at the same time i was like ah eh, this isn't this big of a threat yeah <laughs> i mean but i really just think i mean it, it would be a great series like a netflix series or something like that where it's like here's 12 episodes of ghostbusters i think also what really like kind of put a cog in the wheel a little bit was the female Ghostbusters movie. And that, not because I, I thought it actually had a lot of potential. I thought it could have been great. Yeah. I was I getting I love that. the ca cast and characters of that. I just thought it would have been way better if they were like, this is, these are the Chicago Ghostbusters. Right. They, you know, or, or they almost should have just been called something else, but have it be the same idea. Totally. I, like, it had all the, all the pieces to be... Yeah, it is interesting that no good. Ghostbusters popped up anywhere else in the country. Just New York. Yeah, it's only in New York. <laughs> We're like, the only one. If it was problem. me, I, I would have been in there being like, guys, like, if the Ghostbusters pick, you know, if we're picking up Ghostbusters 20 years later, what happened? I think it... Paranormal activity probably went nuts, and yeah. there's got to be ghosts in every country in the world. I would so hope. So go and no, have... they just as soon as every everyone turns into a ghost, they just go right to New York. Yeah, right. that's it. <laughs> you know, it's New York. It's the Big Apple. It's the melting pot of spirits. Yeah, we have to. Yeah, no, I'm not gonna stay in Europe or Australia or <laughs> wherever I may have died. Sorry, so, I gotta go, guys. I always wanted to see New York. Ah, I'm trapped here now, <laughs> and also I'm part of an army of. Evil undead characters, um, yeah. Did but you, did you see it in theater? I did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And uh, yeah, it was it was good. It wasn't as good as the the last one, but it was better than the female Ghostbusters. <laughs> no, the female Ghostbusters one was actually fine. It just yeah. like all the stupid political stuff that was surrounded it just ruined whatever it was trying to be. Yeah. And um, 
you know, like Kristen Wiig is really funny in that movie. They're all good. Kate McKinnon's really funny. Yeah. The funniest person in the movie, unfortunately, I think is Chris Hemsworth. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> uh, that's sort of a problem. And um, it also broke movie reviewers' brains because mm. movie reviewers now are all like, kind of like, you know, weirdly political, um, like, social justice warriors for some reason and it's just like just review the freaking movie do you ever listen to a confused breakfast podcast have you ever heard i've of lived guys? it because yeah. many of my breakfast no i've never listened oh. to it but there's a podcast you should check it out it's no, called okay. confused breakfast um, these guys we don't talk about other podcasts well Not you yet. should because <laughs> these guys... no but these guys are really good and and they talk about this the whole thing with like um they're... and i was just listening to one about peewee the uh, peewee's big adventure the other day and they were like they read like Siskel and Ebert reviews from back in the day where they gave Pee Wee a zero. A zero. A zero. How could you give that a zero? And it's like, what are you talking sure about? Sure we're not talking about big top Pee Wee, because that I get. Yeah, but even a zero on that? I mean it had yeah. a hot dog tree. It was a talking pig. Yeah. yeah. So well, there's a, a lot talking... of elements I would give points I feel for. Like if you put a talking pig in a movie, you're immediately losing two stars. Right off the bat. Yeah. Or... <laughs> well, Babe and Pig in the City is pretty good. The Babe Cinematic Universe. <laughs> um, I didn't think you were going to bring that up. But yeah. Sorry. now uh, Nowadays, I feel like you go on Rotten Tomatoes and it's, you know, critic score and it's just a picture of a guy crying. <laughs> and then audience score and it's just people going, yeah! yeah. <laughs> so it's like, I think it's time to do away with critics. Yeah. I, I always say that too. Like uh, they're, uh, they're also like, if they're not... Like weirdly political, they're just like older, bitter people who just like, oh, another movie. Yeah, and I know this because I went <laughs> years ago. I got like to see like a critic showing of some like it was a bad Christmas movie. I, I forget if it was the Danny DeVito one or uh, maybe it was the one where Ben Affleck moves in with Tony Soprano. It was mm -hmm. one of those movies, and there was this really older. He was kind of a well-known critic. I forget if he wrote for. Uh, the Times or something, and it was just like, "Wow, oh, what paper are you guys from?" And we go, oh, "We're just comedians." And like, yeah, <laughs> he just clearly was there and like preemptively hated the movie. And I mean, he was right, but <laughs> he just seemed like somebody who's just seen so many movies at this point that he just hates them all. Now. Yeah, and there's just no winning. So I think having a critical eye in everything you do is just so important, and that's something I value in like. That's why I look at like producers and directors as more my heroes than anything else because those are the people who are trying to step back from the whole thing and be like, it's okay. I don't have to like this music to understand why other people like it. I, I don't have to, um, you know, particularly like this artist to enjoy their some of their music. Like I always thought that, that was like, like there's a plenty of musicians and artists and bands that I'm like I'm not really into that band, but they have some good songs. Yes, you you can you can have that critical uh, nature about you, and then walk into something that you have a bad feeling about, and maybe walk away feeling differently. Like my wife took me to go see La La Land. I hate musicals. Oh, okay. Just on like not that I there aren't musicals I like. I just, I really can't stand... I hate musicals because it's impractical. There's no yeah. way everyone would be able to break into song. Like, it just won't right. happen. I just... I... <laughs> but I watched that and I was like, yeah. this was good. Like, this was done it can, really Yeah, it well. can be done correctly. You know, and... Like, I've been to some Broadway plays against my will. And uh, I think the one I enjoyed the most was Motown. Because hmm. um, it was about a cool subject matter. You know, the music rocked yeah. and whatever. But then other things, it's like you go to see like the King and I or King Kong the musical and you're just like, no, no one should be singing any of this. Yeah. Stop. Shut it down. Where's this? I need a SWAT team to just move in. Yeah. Musicals don't really do it for me, but, you know, I'm still going to the next have an open mind about yeah, it. Yeah. The next episode is actually going to be a musical. I'm glad podcast. I missed that one. <laughs> <laughs> but we're going to do a preview. Uh, so watch out. Um, yeah, that's, uh, that's a good point. I've actually, nothing is more triggering than multiple times finding out that you enjoy a Taylor Swift song. Hey, you look, there, I really am not a big fan of Taylor Swift for a number of reasons, but there are definitely... I'm rooting for her now. Though. Songs that I'm like, well, you can't deny this is a good, well-written pop song. 
So Travis you know. Kelsey and Taylor Swift. This has to work. That's all mm. I have to say. You got your Super Bowl. You got your Grammy. <laughs> what else do you need? Uh, a lot of kids. Yeah. And then she could write songs about how terrible her kids are. That would be great. Would it, 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 yeah, it's time to shift from like, <laughs> my relationship suck to my kids suck. My relationship That's... with my kids sucks. <laughs> Come on. Just think about it. I know you're watching. Um, <laughs> but yeah, when it comes to music, and that's funny, is I feel like most people, they have their music and then they're just like, that's it. I don't need to experience anything else. Oh, yeah. Well, but we grew up here in Valley Stream and we had a record store called Slip Disc, which we're very familiar which with. Which I went to exactly one time in my life. Really? Yeah. That's it. <laughs> Someone gave me a gift certificate when uh, I graduated I used to go there college? all the time. I mean, those guys were like pretty cool in the sense that like they were kind of like metal heads and you know one guy who looked like he literally was in kiss but we didn't know oh, that. That. like there was like like but they were cool they would they had an open mind about okay our customers have a broad genre sen- you know sense of genre so would you like to buy this labouche album yeah um exactly. <laughs> It's, you know what, and mentioning slip disc, so we're from Valley Stream, Long Island, which Long Island is, of course, the mecca of stand-up comedy. Right. Every town, there's at least one to six comics, because uh, it's so funny out here. And uh, But Valley Stream used to be such a cooler place, mm. and it's very depressing that there's just nothing to do here anymore, uh, to the point where I had a comedy show here for eight years, and then uh, that place... Uh, vanished we don't need to talk about why and then uh <laughs> the uh after you know everything reopened from the pandemic uh i started doing a show first at this place called the valley stream inn which i think was a front i don't know what was going on there they didn't really know what to do with comedy i was like yeah we should charge tickets and they're like no okay okay each time i went there they go you're gonna do comedy over there now you're over here now you're now you're behind the but now you just you're outside don't even <laughs> Don't even talk to anybody. Don't talk. I'm like, but people are here for the show. Now, um, they're gone. Um, and then I moved to this bar, Larry's, which is one of these bars that's been there for a thousand years. You came to one show yeah. there. Um, and then, but then they, they shot a movie there. And I feel like after that, they were just like, yeah, we're good. Um, or they're selling it. I don't know what's yeah. going on. And then I moved to Buckley's for one show, which is a sort of famous music venue. Uh, a, lot of, a lot of good stuff there. I mean, yeah. I, I I appreciate what they what they do there. You know, Brian is uh, the guy that like runs everything. Yeah, he they curates, built a nice stage. You, you know, he really cares about you know building a uh, a world for a certain type of you know music. I mean, he kind of caters to like early rock and roll things like that. I mean, he does all, everything. But he built like a knit a niche for himself that like is very cool, and I and it's been there forever. Yeah. So I mean, we filmed a, a scene for the new movie there, and Brian couldn't have been more helpful. I mean, like, and it was the perfect set and setting for what we were doing. That was an insane day. Yeah. Oh yeah. You're, that you're... song is still in my head, right? <laughs> Y'all no good for me. <laughs> I got way, my character got way too into that. Uh, <laughs> But yeah, but the, so there was slip disc, and then uh, you know there was a sex shop. When I was growing up, there was a a gay bar. Cross the street McDonald's too. That McDonald's. No, it's oh yeah, it was right. Cool. Yeah. It was a Roy Rogers. Roy when Rogers I was back up. in the day. That but I remember it was it had been closed, and it just was like you know. Yeah. There used to be McDonald's Express for yeah, some reason. I that we had too. a baseball card store, a very cool pool hall. Uh, if we lose Valbrook Diner, just shut this whole place just down. Light it on fire. It's over. <laughs> um, pretty much over. So, okay. So you're working <laughs> on the sequel to Sunday, Sunday, Sunday. Sunday, 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 Sunday. Or Sunday, Sunday, Sunday 2. To the to, sequel. In parentheses, <laughs> another Sunday. <laughs> uh, and it looks, the trailer just dropped. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, it looks grittier. My mustache looks great. I grew a mustache for this. So that Thank alone, you, that. you should watch. Well, I didn't grow a mustache. I grew everything out and then I shaved. 
everything except the mustache. And I mean, people on Instagram were just very confused. <laughs> I was like, I'm, I grew this mustache because I need to commit exactly one crime, <laughs> and then I'm going to shave it off. So it looked good, man. Um, the first one, though, the first movie took like you started shooting it in 2017, mm. and then when did you finally finish shooting it? Yeah, it was like five years all all through, like from day one of filming, which. Actually, I think April 2nd was, which just passed, was our five-year anniversary, I think, or six years. Seven. Six, six seven. Seven? I don't, yeah. know. I don't know what year it's it is. It's been though. a lo- I Yeah, the pandemic really, like, kind of messed up my <laughs> concept of time. But, yeah, it, like, from, from conception, it took about 10 years because I had never done any filmmaking before. And I had this idea for a script. Yeah. Which I wrote. And then kind of put on the back burner. But then I started shooting on iPhones and like just for fun, I got it for my first iPhone. I was like, oh, you know, it'd be kind of fun to make the movie with an iPhone. And then we started filming and five years later, we, we wrapped it up. But it was a process, man. I mean, Yeah, that's so boring. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, I, it's in a whole bunch of festivals, and uh, I'm excited to finally get that IMDb credit. I think you're the first person. <laughs> I think I'm the only person listed on IMDb. Why well, I know, I guess, because once you started getting to the festivals, they just like automatically add you to. Yeah, I don't. I, I'll I be think. honest. I still don't know how any of this stuff works. Like, People are really hot. When I was filming a movie like ten years ago, I got like one like sort of really like serious actor to be in it. And uh, and as after we shot, he's like, "Is the IMDb page up yet?" And I'm like, "I don't think you can do that yet." He's like, "No, you can. As soon as you start production, you can just make your own. Let me know." And I'm like, "All right, let's 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 actually finish the movie first, yeah. and then we'll you know get the IMDb." Uh, I did set it up. Credits. I really probably should sit down and like play with it a little more. I just I my problem with this and um, is just that like. I always kind of go back to that. What is the uh, the jo- I'm like the Joker in that scene where he says like I'm I'm like a dog chasing, chasing a car. A car. Like, I don't know what to do with it when I get it. Yeah, that's how I feel because like I do this with art with with things that I'm working on creatively. I just want to make it, and then I have no idea what to do with it when. <laughs> Like, I knew, okay, film I just festivals, put stuff out, and I'm like, just plays like this. Yeah, I'm like that, too. And, you know, I think it is important to do the IMDb stuff. It's yeah. important to do. And I try my hardest, but it's just, it's difficult, because, you know, I got, like... I real, don't exactly like, you know, know what I'm spending $160 for per year on IMDb Pro. I oh, think you, it's, you pay for it. I think it's literally just so I can have a picture on my page. Ah. Uh, you know, so when the casting people show I didn't up. pay for it. <laughs> I think... Oh, no, you could make an account and do stuff for free. Yeah, but... yeah. I just mean for the movie. I think I just... Oh, no, I... you shouldn't have to pay for that. Yeah, Jeez, right? Okay. That would be a scam and a half. Yeah. And then I... Did, I don't know if you were lying to me when you said this, but did I sort of inspire you... Initially, because I remember I got you to be in a sketch, which yeah. ultimately you didn't make because I shot the Terrible. sketch three times. Um, it was, that was a, fun, yeah, <clears throat> where I got you to play Lex Luthor, basically yeah. Jesse Eisenberg, Lex yeah. Luthor. I had the hair simply right. because you had long hair. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you're not this, you know, shriveled up little, you know, sad guy. Someday you're getting there. No. <laughs> But, so, I was shooting this Batman vs. Superman sketch, and it was supposed to be when Bruce Wayne meets uh, Clark Kent for yeah. the first time, which is a famous scene from that terrible movie uh, with Ben Affleck and Henry Cavill, Cavill, or his name. And Cavill. so we shoot it once with this guy uh, who actually was in, like, film production. Not, he's he wasn't, like, he didn't film things, but he had all the equipment. <coughs> Um, and it didn't look great. I was like, hey, can we do this again? If not, that's totally fine. And he goes, sure. So we come to shoot one day after the coffee shop closes that we were filming at, because every location was a coffee shop, because right. that's all I could get my hands on. <laughs> we were going to make this look like a ballroom. Uh, and he forgot, like, one big piece of equipment, and that caused... Th- so it, it was maybe not going to work, and then people were waiting around... 
and then people started complaining loudly, which was very annoying on their part, and the guy got really mad, and I was like, hey, let's just settle down, and then he threatened to punch me. And I was like, okay, well, I guess we're done with this shoot. You might have been at that one, too, actually. I think I was. Would you have had my back? Oh, yeah. Man. Would you have jumped in front if oh, he yeah. took a swing at me? That's I got you. So, <laughs> so then, after much thought, I go, all right, here's what's going to happen. My friend Adam is just going to shoot it with his camera, and if I can't get a second actor to play Bruce Wayne or Clark Kent, I'm going to play both. So I ended up playing both characters. Yeah. <laughs> there was no Lex Luthor. There was also supposed to be Jimmy Olsen. Mm. He got cut too. Uh, so I really, three times, I had to try to film this sketch. And it did come out great. Um, in fact, I re-released part of it on TikTok like two years ago. And to this day, it's still the biggest TikTok video. Amazing. Yeah. I'm like Glad I wasn't in it. You would it would have I would have gotten kicked off TikTok. <laughs> uh, but TikTok, see you later. No, I don't even know if they're getting rid of it. Uh, TikTok's such a weird place. They're always like, "Hey, use this music," and then you use it for your video, and then three days later, oh, there was a copyright claim on yeah. your your video. It's gone. <laughs> Enjoy this video with no sound. That happened to me the other day. Uh, There's that new uh, Beyonce song. Um, the what's it called again? Uh, Texas Hold'em. Oh, right, Texas, right, because she, she the, went country. Yeah, my wife was like, oh, listen to the song, and I'm like, listen to it, I'm like, this is the theme song to the show Doug. <laughs> Literally, I was like, this is the Doug melody. do 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 Yeah, that's it. So I made a video, I took the, the clip of Doug intro, and I put the music for her thing on it, and it's been going pretty oh, wild that's on hilarious. TikTok. hilarious. And then they flagged it. They were like, oh, you can't put that up. So they were like, so you have to choose from one of our clips. So I just looked and it was like, there's Texas Hold'em. And I clicked it uh, and they're like, okay, now you can use it. Yeah, now, yeah but that'll change right. again in like three weeks. Yeah, it's I just know. stupid. It's so weird. Um, yeah. yeah. TikTok is a wild Tell place. your wife, stop making you do these <laughs> things. Listen to this song, watch this movie. Enough. Gets me in trouble. Yeah. So, so as I said, I'm quitting. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> that's that's comedy that's entertainment you're constantly in this like zone of uh you know like Giving things up. are great ah it's over it's yeah. done you know i had a week last week where thursday night i had an amazing show and then each progressive night things just got worse <laughs> oh, it's a constant battle i know and it's just this constant like uh you know am i getting enough joy out of this i don't know what but do you I'm, do to combat it I get in a fight with mm -hmm. people on social media. Just about... bum fights go out? Oh, <laughs> yeah. oh, social media. Yeah. I just like, you know, <laughs> hey, give me your thoughts on the Middle East. <laughs> Wrong! Oh, my God. The comedy scene, and uh, I'll, I'll, we'll wrap it up with this, is like getting out of control with, uh, with like, this the political stuff. It's always like, you know, it got very political in, like, 2016, and then again in 2020, but also there was nothing to do in 2020, mm. so... Um, you know, but now like there's a, a popular comedy club in the city that's, they do podcasts and they just, you know, they had two people on to just argue about Israel, Palestine. And it, it wasn't funny. And mm. I'm just like, this isn't, you're a comedy club. Just, you know, people should be on making jokes. Like yeah. I understand there's serious things going on in the world, but it's our job as comedians to keep the funny going uh, but comedy stopped being about humor some time ago. <laughs> I, I, you know, it's funny because like I follow a lot of comedians, and I, I, I'm sorry, I love comedy, man. Like it's it's probably my favorite art form. I oftentimes would dream, oh, it'd be really fun to go up and do what you guys do. But it's just it's not a passion of mine in that way. So I try to be yeah. like a good fan, I guess. That's good. But too many people are like, I could do this and then yeah, do it. I, and... I do find myself <laughs> to be a, a, a funny person in a crowd of people that I feel comfortable with, but I don't know if I would feel comfortable enough to get up there and do it. But one thing I do believe about comedy is like, everybody should be made fun of. And everybody should be on the table to be made fun yes, of. Yes, as long as it's... Not hateful. Yeah, not hatefully. Like, that's always the... Also, the, the joke should be funny. Like, sure. a lot of the time, people just, you know, make fun of something 
and not but not there's no humor to it it's right. just like you know i hate this group of people yeah. I'm like okay where's the joke <laughs> they just want to bad yeah hate for like hate sake yeah is not funny but like make you know poking fun at even if like a, a disability or something like that like if it's done tastefully even the person with the disability of whatever it is could potentially laugh because like that's what you know you look at like mel brooks and the way he does things like it's right on that line but he doesn't really cross that line ever like if you really look at what he's doing and i i personally think he's one of the greatest comedic directors of all time sure he's a jewish world war Couldn't ii make veteran any of his movies today he, I, th- I think you could. <laughs> no, I, I think you could if Definitely you were Mel Brooks. Young Frankenstein. Yeah, I, mean, I don't know. But <laughs> no yeah, one wants to hear that. I mean, like, did you see his new movies? The, the I mean, the special that he did, like uh, History of the World part. Uh, I did watch most of it. Yeah, it was really good. Yeah, man. like good stuff. really, really good. And it was kind of fun to see all the comedians that came out, like that were excited to be about uh, a Mel Brooks movie. You know, and I think he's one of those guys that like he towed that line for so long and then everybody still like stuck with him because they were like, he's just really a good person that's naturally funny. It's not like, uh, you know, Woody Allen, where once you figured out what he did, you were like, ah, great movies, but I don't know if I could do it anymore. You know, like I never even thought most of his movies were that good. I, I mean, but There's, I'm good like that. I could I could just sense that stuff. Never thought Cosby was funny. Look what happened. Listen to me, people. I, I could just get a vibe about certain people. Yeah. Um, I tell you one thing that was really funny, and you might have to send me a, a screenshot of this so I could post it in this episode. When you get arrested in the Sunday 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 movie, and they sl- and you but you're smoking the cigarette, and they the cop slams your head down in the hood. I think I was the only person in the theater to laugh, and I was like, was that not supposed to be funny? I thought that was hilarious. <laughs> it was supposed to be funny. You know, that's the thing about the movie, too. Rest in peace comedy. Yeah. So. I I, and that's why I really wanted to work with you with the movie, because, like, and Jesse, too, uh, Jesse Lyons, who I He's also... He's a goofball, who, yeah. Who is also a hilarious person. Like, I, I like... And James Morano, who's also, you know, the uh, cinematographer for a lot of the movie. You know, I like to surround myself with people that can laugh and take a joke. Because, uh, to me, that lets me be free. Yeah. And, you know, like when we filmed the last scene uh, for the sequel, I had written out so much for you guys. And then when I stood there with you, I was like, I can't. This is just a whole movie about Joe now. <laughs> yeah, well, this scene has to be Joe and Jesse, like, doing their thing. Yeah. I need these points hit. If you guys can get there however you want to get there, drive the car. Because I think that's, like, the magic of comedy, where it's, like, your spontaneity and your reactionism from what's happening is really what's going to make it funny. And even in the first one, like, you did things that weren't on the paper but, like, you were just reacting to what was happening. Yeah, I was like, that's got to make it. I'm you very know? dangerous on a set. That's <laughs> good, though. Like, I, I, li- I personally like that. I mean, I, I like directors that give their actors and, and people freedom to, to, to be who they are and do what they do well. And, you know, the thing about you that I liked working with was, like, I was like, look, this is what I need. I'd like to get this. If you can give me that. I'll let you go and do whatever you want to. And it was a good balance. You know what I mean? It's like, okay, I got what I needed and I got more because I gave you that longer leash to play with. And I think that's always like a, a telltale sign of a great comedian and a good actor. Which And those te- tend to go together really well these days. I think you see a lot of great comedians do great acting. And, and why? Because, you know... You have to have that playful nature about yourself if you're going to be a good actor. Right. You know, to my opinion, in my opinion. Well, that was today's episode of Inside the Joe Pontillo Actor Studio. Yeah. And once again, I quit. <laughs> I don't know. There's like a whole YouTube trend of like very popular YouTube channels that just get like a little bit of negative feedback. And then they post a video where they just go, why I'm quitting YouTube. <laughs> Goodbye, YouTube. And then the still is just this like very tragic looking picture of them being like, Goodbye, YouTube. Uh, someone did give me some notes on like 
lighting, but we fixed it, and sound. So we're getting there, right? But you're watching it. Everybody's enjoying it. It's good. Thanks for tuning in. Uh, anything you want to plug before you go? Uh, nothing I want to plug. I just want to unplug my light before I leave. No, nope, that stays on that. forever. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, shows coming up for me. You can see me. Uh, what's happening? Tuesday, the 23rd on that. Uh, oh, my God. What's the name? of the, It's called The Red Horse in White Plains. And then uh, Friday, the 26th, say something funny at Poco in New York City. Come to that. And then May 4th, I'm in the Poconos somewhere. Uh, go to my website. You'll see it all. Thanks for watching. Hit like, hit subscribe, hit the computer, and that's it. Goodbye. <laughs>